What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit since I've done a review roundup where I cover a couple of movies in one video and today I'm doing that because I'm a little bit late to both of these releases we're going to be talking about. One of them, the first one we're going to be talking about, I actually saw a few weeks back on my birthday but if you guys have been following along with the channel you know I've been going through some health issues so that put me behind on doing this video and then I decided hey let me just wait till I go and catch up on another movie that I'm a little bit behind on and just do them together in one video. So without further ado let's get into the first review for this video and that is for the movie called called If. Written and directed by John Krasinski, he also stars in this film alongside Kaylee Fleming, Ryan Reynolds, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Steve Carell, and many more. So as I mentioned just a moment ago, I actually saw this movie a few weeks back, actually on my birthday. I went and did a little double feature of re-watching The Fall Guy, which I've already done a review here for on the channel, as well as this film, If. And I was looking forward to checking this movie out, but I had heard some mixed things going into it. Some of my close YouTube peers saying that it was one of the biggest surprises of the year and that it was incredibly emotional, with some other of my YouTube peers telling me that it was just a little bit lackluster and not what they were really hoping for when it comes to John Krasinski as a writer and director. He's done a lot of really great things in his career as a writer and a director so I was pretty excited to see what he was going to do with this film and one thing to mention right out of the gate that I'm sure you guys have heard countless people say that I just have to kind of throw in my two cents on is the fact that this is clearly a live action adaptation of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends which was a cartoon I grew up loving as a kid on Cartoon Network and it blows my mind honestly that John Krasinski with the name that he has in the world of cinema didn't just go and get the license of that property from Cartoon Network to make a movie that was attached to that franchise. I feel like it could have made a lot more money in the box office had he d done that, and it's already kind of gained those comparisons, especially with the main imaginary friend of that TV show and of this movie, both being called Blue. It kind of blows my mind, honestly, that uh, they didn't just make a Foster's Home movie, and it also surprises me that Cartoon Network has not come for John Krasinski in the studio behind this with any sort of lawsuit. Maybe they made it different enough, but it was incredibly clear to me, and it's been one of those things that's been a big comparison for most people. So as I mentioned, John Krasinski wrote and directed this film. He also stars in the film as the father of the main character of the film, played by Kaylee Fleming, and we learn pretty quickly into the film that he's about to undergo heart surgery. She's coming back into the city, New York City, to stay at her old home, which is now lived in by her grandmother, played by Fiona Shaw, and while she's awaiting her father's whole medical procedure, she ends up uncovering a world of imaginary friends, or as they call them in this movie, ifs. She ends up meeting Ryan Reynolds' character, Cal, who we learn is working alongside these imaginary friends to try to help them find new kids that they can be imaginary friends to. They all had their own kids at one point, but they all outgrew them and eventually forgot them, and so now they're in a place where they need to try and help these imaginary friends find new kids that they can attach to. And when I went into this movie, I was looking forward to a cute, fun time, and I'm happy to say that's exactly what this movie is. I don't think this movie is nearly as bad as some people have said, but I don't necessarily think it's as great as I've heard some people say as well. I would say I'm right in the middle. I found the film to be well acted for the most part and very cute and enjoyable to watch. As a fan of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, it was undoubtedly nice to kind of see a live action adaptation of that to some extent. And with that came some fun, really interesting visuals. The film is very colorful and vibrant and imaginative, which oftentimes kept me really engaged and interested to see where the movie was going to go. With all that said, though, if I had to be completely and utterly honest on my take on the film, I would say that the film felt fairly hollow when it came down to its story. The film really just is about this young girl, Kaylee Fleming, coming across this world and helping Ryan Reynolds' character help find all of these other imaginary friends, their own new kids, trying to give them a sense of purpose. And throughout the course of the film, you also recognize that Kaylee Fleming's character is kind of missing something within herself as well. And as the movie progresses, not only is she helping them, but they're helping her in a different way as well. I don't want to spoil it too much, but there is a reveal at the end of the film around Ryan Reynolds' character that I found to be fairly predictable and I think that that's ultimately my thoughts on the film. A film that was cute, enjoyable, has some nice moments that will tug on the heartstrings especially in the, as we lead into the credits but ultimately didn't really have much meat on the bones when it comes down to the story that had me really thinking about the movie much after it was over. It was cute and it was fun but it's not one I can really see myself revisiting very often. It is a movie I think will work more for kids than adults though so if you do have kids and you want to throw something on that has a nice message and has some nice heart tugging moments then this is definitely that kind of movie but if you're 
you're an adult going into this movie hoping that they can, you know, take the imaginary friend premise and give you some more depth to it, I ultimately found it to be a pretty bare bones cute tale that's fairly predictable but fun to watch. Kaylee Flemings definitely holds a lot of the emotional weight of this film as well. I really want to pr praise her character B. I found that she did an incredible job in this film and some of the most emotional moments of this film come from her performance and I think as a young actress sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see young kids hold all the weight of a movie emotionally because you know it's it's really hit or miss with a lot of kid actors but I think that Kaylee Flemings did an incredible job of really really showcasing a lot of emotion over the course of the film and a lot of maturity in her role. While she is young and has a lot of naive energy about her in moments she ultimately also shows a lot of emotional maturity as what's going on with her father with him having his heart surgery also makes her fear the past because she lost her mother to illness at a young age and she's afraid that her father will also leave her which is where she starts to connect even more so with the imaginary friends most notably ryan reynolds character and i think ryan reynolds does a good job here you have a lot of that same humor that you come to expect from ryan reynolds uh, he's very charming throughout the course of the film john krasinski while not in the film a whole bunch is also very likable as well and it's nice that he was able to pair up with his old office uh, co-star steve carell as the character of blue the main imaginary friend that we focus on in the course of the film i thought he was a very fun and likable character and you also have phoebe waller bridge here in the mix as the character of blossom who i really enjoyed as well and then of course just because the film makes a point to really mention it it is heartbreaking as well that uh during the release of this film of course lewis gossett jr also passed away who plays the character of lewis a very cute bear in the film uh so it, it is really a shame that he passed away um and uh, being able to see this movie and see his role especially the little nice little touching tribute they give him at the end of the film um definitely uh, made me feel something as a, as a fan of him as an actor but that's gonna be my thoughts on if nothing i would necessarily rave about but definitely a cute fun time that maybe one day i could see myself throwing on a streaming at some point but also isn't one i'm clamoring to rewatch anytime soon let's move on now to the next movie that i want to talk about that i actually just watched last night and that movie is called the bike riders written and directed by jeff nichols and based on the book by danny lyon this film stars people like jody comer austin butler tom hardy mike fast michael shannon and many many more so the bike riders is one of those movies that i'm kind of bummed that i missed out on its opening weekend this is a movie i wanted to see but again as i mentioned it came out amidst me not feeling too well and so i ended up missing it when it came out in theaters initially but i definitely wanted to check it out the trailers over the course of time had hooked me in i'm always a big sucker for a period piece film especially a film that has to do with things like bikers i definitely was intrigued by the trailers and going into this film i didn't know too much about it but just the base gist about it is that the film takes place over the course of the 60s and 70s and actually is based on a book that was put together by a photojournalist who took photos of a biker club over the course of about a decade and would do interviews with them and then of course this movie is loosely based on the various interviews and the images and the various stories that were compiled in that book that were given to us by Danny Lyon. Danny Lyon in this film is actually played by Mike Fast, who over the course of the film is interviewing most notably Jodie Comer's character, the character of Kathy, a woman who found herself falling in love with a man named Benny, who was the youngest and also maybe one of the most rambunctious in the group that of these biker clubs known as the Vandals. In this film, he's played by Austin Butler. So you have this love interest immediately between Jodie Comer and Austin Butler. And as time goes on, and as this biker club would continue to grow throughout the course of the film, expanding to different regions, regions expanding to more and more members in the group it would eventually go from a biker club to a biker gang and the leader of this club played by tom hardy would eventually realize that this thing that he started that was meant to be a passionate group of bikers who maybe were a little bit rough and tough definitely caused some trouble wanted to smoke cigarettes and kind of just live a rebellious life and have a drink eventually it went from them being a bunch of punks to being flat out criminals and ultimately finds that this biker club that he is starting to just be a passionate group of like-minded individuals ultimately become something way out of his ideas of what this was supposed to be and completely goes out of his hands as this starts to go on of course this would eventually really disrupt the relationship between Kathy and Benny as Kathy is just a normal respectable young woman who found herself falling in love with a biker and found herself amidst this world but what started as something that was maybe a little bit tense a little bit creepy but then she eventually found herself feeling safe amongst these bikers eventually became something where she found herself incredibly scared to be around 
this group of bikers and it ends up kind of tarnishing everybody's life as time goes on. I won't say too much more because the film is a little bit newer than something like If, but ultimately that's the base premise. You follow this biker club of these people called the Vandals and as the movie progresses that club starts to become more and more violent, starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and those ideals that they had initially, the, the sole goal that they had starting that club starts to unfortunately vanish away. And I think for the most part this is a really well made film. This is an interesting film to talk about too because it's not one that has a traditional three act structure that you can just kind of give a usual critique to. It's always interesting when you watch a movie like this that kind of chronicles the life of individuals and so in so doing that you bounce around from weeks to months to years in time within a two hour runtime. Because of that, some of the film can feel a little bit choppy at times, but I think that the movie does a good job of using that framework of it being an interview process, Danny Lyon interviewing Kathy over the course of the film to hear the stories as a really good way for us to kind of navigate from scene to scene, from location to location, without it ever feeling overly choppy and something that you're not able to follow. With that, unfortunately, it comes with the fact that you do have a lot of characters in the film. There are a lot of bikers that they do focus on. I think for the most part, most of them are given their time to shine and enough time for you to understand what their role in that world was. And they're all played by fantastic actors. But I do think at times as well, there was an element of certain characters feeling uh, like there was a massive lack of character development. You have a lot of big names in the mix, not only with the main three, Tom Hardy, Austin Butler, and Jodie Comer, but also with people like Michael Shannon. You also have people like, uh, Norman Reedus in the mix, Boyd Holbrook, and tons of others. And I was actually really impressed by the big names that they were able to stack throughout the course of this film, even some actors who appear in smaller roles throughout the course of the film. And with that, it was unfortunate that some of those characters didn't really get a whole lot of screen time to shine, leading to us feeling a bit of a lack of character development between these various characters. But since this is something that's supposed to be more of a true telling of a story, but chronicling the main events of this story, I ultimately think for the most part, most of that is handled really really well and all of it is really held up by these incredible performances given by our three main leads but also the rest of the supporting cast. Tom Hardy does an incredible job of playing this individual who was really excited about creating this club being the badass leader of this club having the the say over everything but it was interesting to see this badass individual slowly start to become more fearful of this thing he had created as it starts to kind of just unravel and become something that he had never envisioned. With Austin Butler's character here you have this badass character as well who's willing to kind of push himself to any situation cares more about biking than anything else that ultimately finds himself more and more pushed away from the love of biking because of how dangerous this world becomes and i think that jody comer does an incredible job of really showcasing a woman in love who's at the center of all this and is willing to take in this new slightly dangerous life but ultimately finds herself also overwhelmed by the fact that this world is starting to become something that she never wanted it to be and i think as the movie starts to unravel as things start to get darker and darker in the story the more and more interested i found myself watching this film maybe it was because i had to pee for a big chunk of the runtime but there are a few moments in this film in the latter half that i found to be a little bit slow i think it had something to do with the fact that i had to pee i was waiting for the movie to end so i can get out and go and pee immediately i didn't want to miss anything so i didn't leave so i don't know if that's necessarily a criticism on the film but i figured it was worth mentioning but outside of that when it comes down to cinematography the music used throughout the course of the film the performances all of the biking elements elements of this film, the sound design, and from what I've heard from people who are actual bikers, like just the, the authenticity to what it is to be a part of a biker club or biker gang, I think this film did a really good job of giving you a peek behind the curtain as to what this kind of life could be like, while also showcasing a transition from a biker club to a biker gang. Really enjoyed a lot about this film. It's a film that I can see myself revisiting later on in time. And another thing too, is that because the film takes place throughout the 60s and 70s, part of what I found myself really enjoying is that the stylistic natures of how this film was shot, as well as how the story was put together, actually reminded me a lot of films from the 60s and 70s. So I think there was a great attention to detail to not only be a period piece that felt authentic to its time while you're watching it, but also something that felt authentically as if it had been made in that time that it was actually talking about so yeah that's gonna be my thoughts on both if and the bike riders definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts on these movies do you like these movies do you not like these movies which do you prefer are these either one of these films something that's on your radar if you haven't checked them out whatever the case may be leave any and all comments down below and i'll see you beautiful people in the next one Bye bye